Well, as I promised, this evening we're featuring the music of Arclough Silver Band and St. Mary's College Choir from their new LP, Among the Wicklow Hills, which is now available in the shops. Arclough Silver Band's reputation nationwide has grown tremendously over the last number of years, and lately... You know, I spent five years as an apprentice. Brass band I did block release courses, I took examinations. And for 14 years, I got up in the morning at 8 o'clock and I went to work and I finished at a quarter to five in the evening and I came home and then I went to the old club or whatever. And it takes time to, to change the habits. A lovely piece of music entitled Rigged Ships. The normal day, I usually would get up about a quarter to nine and possibly I'd go to mass. Then I'm involved in a few things in the town. I would probably visit the local radio station and do a bit of bookkeeping or something. Go home for lunch. I might have something to do around the house, maybe if it was summertime, cut the grass or whatever. But I can fill in the day reasonably well. And the evening time then, usually, in nine, nine weeks out of ten, I'm spending time in, in the youth club. Hello. Park up Community Radio. Yes. But as time went on then, I, I, I suppose I, I became more involved in other things. You know, in community work. Other things I'm involved in. And that, that has ke- helped to keep my myself, my mind alert and, and active, maybe too much so in, in some cases. But once I had something to take my mind off the problem of not having a job, I'm coping a little better. You know, okay. managing to, to, to spend my day more profitably, from my point of view. I believe time can be constructively used, and very constructively used, to benefit the community. People who have talent and ability are standing on street corners day in, day out. And the only reason they're standing there is that they, they, they don't know how to go about doing anything else. People find it difficult to understand why somebody does something on a voluntary basis, somebody does something for nothing nowadays. And I, I often get this thrown at me, you know, you, you don't do nothing for nothing. It's not true. I mean, it, there's fulfilment to be got out of it. There's a great amount of satisfaction, feeling that you're helping somebody. And if the, if the young boys and, and girls who are growing up today, if we think about it, and, and the future looks very bleak, I'm not a pessimist by any means, but I'm a realist. I don't know whether we've hit the bottom of this recession or not, but I think we've, we've got to be educating our, uh, the children and the young boys and girls. There's the possibility that when they leave school, there may not be jobs for them. And that's one of the reasons why I say education is necessary. Because I think a lot of people are beginning to realise that this whole business of unemployment is a very, very strange experience for many, many people. And we're beginning to see courses on the use of spare leisure time, the use of, of your free time when you come from employment. But we need more. In 1981, when I was made redundant, there weren't any. I think ANCO has tremendous potential, but I don't think it's being used properly. Now, we've had an ANCO training unit parked here in Arclough for some time now. There have been numerous youngsters have gone through it. But to what end? They've gone through it and come out the other end as they went in. There's no prospect. We've had courses on, on returning to work. What's the point in having a course on return to work for people who are not going to return to work? And they're costing money. And I think that money could be much more usefully employed in the development of community development organisations, in the development of community organisations to cater for these people, to help them to use their time. A 
I think, is one of the most difficult things that schools have to tackle, and that's changing young people's understanding of employment, unemployment. And we have to start looking at activity which is paid and activity which isn't paid. And each of them is valid and has its own time and its own place in your life. Uh, but to sell that or to get that across to young people, and in particular to get it across to parents, is going to be a long, slow process, but I think schools have got to tackle it. The government must be aware of ways in which it can facilitate people who are unemployed without not throwing the whole responsibility on them. But in this business of allowing people in areas of high unemployment to find activities that are creative and uh, good for their area and good for themselves, I think it's local and community groups that have pride of place and that our centralised agencies like ANCO, Youth Employment Agency and so on must be in a background supportive role. Handing out money on the dole is an easy way out, it's the easy option. Uh, organising a society whereby people who are given um, support by the society to live and encouragement to do other things in a leisure uh, context is much, much more difficult. But it's something we will have to think seriously about and perhaps do, and do very quickly. I think to some degree we sell a dream to young people in the school system. I, I think that the young person is told, do what I tell you, learn this, and you'll be well off. You know, you'll get a job and you'll do okay. And I think that's a dream which is rapidly becoming threadbare, and young people are beginning to see it. You know, and I think that that's really the danger area. And unless we start becoming very positive about the opportunity there is in working without being paid for it, if you like, in unemployment, that that's an opportunity, not something to be terrified of. Until we begin getting that across, I think the, the system is going to suffer and the youngsters are going to suffer.